Hi guys, this is Elise Rid from Amaranth and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. Okay, Elisa. My name is Alejandro. I'm from Uruguay. I'm far, far away from you. Wow. Let's start talking about Manifest. You're on you now new album that's about to be released in, in October 2nd. I know you had some delays due to the pandemic. How do you feel about releasing this album in the midst of all this chaos? Um, I have to say that we feel actually as happy as we can be at this time because uh, since we don't, we're not allowed to tour and uh, it would have been very harsh for a disaster for the band to be, you know, cancelling, uh, being on the road. We just finished the tour with Sabaton mm-hmm. and uh, everything went as planned, actually. And uh, we were supposed to release the album on in October, but we put it, it first earlier because we were supposed to go to the US on a tour and we wanted to have the album out by then. But then, so now basically we're back to the original plan, which is good for us because it gave us a little bit more time. Um, we are going to record two videos tomorrow. We had recorded one video, and then I had the pleasure to do interviews. Uh-huh. So uh, it could have been worse, but it's uh, kind of good. And also, I think the album is very is very fitting for the, the current situation. Um, yeah. So uh, it turned out good, and we're happy. I know a lot of bands uh, postponed their releases. Yes. Um, but we we had, the, of course, the opportunity to do it as well. But we decided, like, no, we care. Music is too important, and we we take the you know we we're just gonna do it, and uh, I think it was a good decision. Yeah, I know that that's the spirit. I know we as reviewers, it's kind of crazy to manage all the dates, all the date changes, all the time. They, they say an album is yes. going to be released at, at that time, and then hopefully they they it's going to be released next time, another month, and it's kind of crazy to organize, but but it's all good. Uh-huh. I listened to, to the album already. It's very good, very powerful, very energetic as always. On their previous album, Helix, Nils, Nils has just joined the band. So the songs were practically composed without him. For Manifest, he's already fully established in the band. And this is noticeable in the compositions. He's having more participation. Was this chemistry felt in the studio? Oh yeah, absolutely. It felt very good for me. I, I know, I, that was one thing I was nervous about when we wrote the album. Uh, the mm-hmm. previous album because that was the first album we recorded with him but now we've done that and we're 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 know each other really well now and i will know his vocals and his uh, yeah different styles and uh, it was very inspiring to keep that in mind to know that we are one like solid family now and we can uh, go all in with all kinds of ideas and also we know that he appreciates a lot our ideas which helps of course and he's very positive towards um what me and olaf create so so it was very nice, and, and also, of course, it, the t- uh, tuning is a bit lower on this album than the previous uh-huh. one, because it suits uh, the better for the for Nils's voice, and uh, that was, of course, very important. Yeah, it was really, really good to have taken that step, so to speak. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's awesome. Um, there are some very interesting special features on this album. There are some special guests. Uh, let's start first with your, your duet with Nura Lohimo from Battle Beast. For the song Strong, yeah. it's a very powerful song with a great message, and there's a great video behind it. How do you feel working with her? Well, it feels really, really cool, actually. Uh, I mean, I've got the chance to work with Andy Legosso for the Do or Die song, uh, who is another very strong female character in the scene, and she has inspired a lot of people. And I think Nura has also something very unique, mm-hmm. uh, being a, a strong woman. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, with a very great voice. And uh, the whole band actually loves her vocals. It was uh, an easy choice to create a duet for the both of us. And we were supposed to go on tour together in the States. And we were looking forward to perform the song mm-hmm. together live on 
on, yeah. on stage and, and but it, I mean that plan is postponed it will happen some other time but uh, yeah we, it, it feels really cool and I love to like uh, being a woman myself to lift up other females and, and show also the fans that we really do love to collaborate and uh, it's very inspiring it's the first time um, it's not so often I get to sing with other female vocalists mm-hmm, since I, I have know. two men on my side so <laughs> I know. it was a very fresh refreshing feeling Okay, but, but there's another female vocalist that you sent recently, and it's Angela Gosso that appears on the Do yeah. or Die video. But I noticed uh-huh. that she doesn't appear on the album version of the song, right? Yeah, uh, correct. Why is that? Why is it just for the video and not for the album? Because we wanted to make that a side project, like an uh, in-between uh-huh. album releases thing. Okay. Uh, like a stuff, as, as, uh, an idea and a... Uh, a collaboration that stood out from any album. We had a lot of songs already written that we could have placed on the album, but we thought it was so kind of fun and uh, unpredictable to, mm-hmm. to place an, another version of that song because what's the most important with the song is not the vocalists, but the, the message. Yeah. And also, I know that the boys really love the song and they talked about it a lot, like, oh, I wonder how it would have sounded like if we were singing it. And some fans were also thinking, but where is Niels and Henrik? And now they get their... Uh, their own version okay but yeah like i said basically just to like kind of lift the message and it's that the who sings is not the main main importance for us especially it's more like yeah the song fitted really good into the concept as well of the album and uh oh, so we so we did the really crazy idea to to make a a, a second version but mm-hmm. an album version yeah 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 i know uh, that that sounds right many bands do that actually And, and I think the video came out like a couple of months ago, two or three months ago. So it, it wasn't actually a, a single for the album. I know Angela, this was her first public appearance since her exit from Arch Enemy, I think. How it was for you as a band to be able to, to put her like in, in the spotlight again on your video? Well, it was a privilege, like a, yeah. an honor, I have to say. Uh, because I saw her actually on her last, the last summer she played festivals with the Arch Enemy. I saw, I was happy to see her perform live. And uh, that was the last time I saw her. Um, mm-hmm. It was... Funny enough, her own idea that she asked us, like, oh, I mean, I can, I have this idea and, and it would also be fun to be part of it. Uh, and we were like, what? So you're going to do a small comeback and, and, and like with us, I mean, it's uh, something I would never have ever dreamt of could happen, but it, but it did. And I think that's the charm. And that's what we actually believe in as a band and as people that the most unpredictable things can happen and all your dreams can come true and all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> That's what I like to say, so, so, dreams do come true, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, she's a very important character in the bif- in the business. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, it was uh, amazing, really. Nice. There's a very funny song in, in Manifest, I found out, the, the song Boom. <laughs> uh, uh, That's a song where, where Henry starts like rapping with growls and, and this, uh, this has a lot of experimentation full of twists and turns and strange things. Do you like to do this, this kind of experimentations on, on albums? Oh yes, yes, yes. We, <laughs> if we probably do it even more, but it's uh, extremely fun. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a song that's supposed to make people happy, I mean. Yes. <laughs> that's... Uh, I... And it's... Uh, I, in, we, we love to play around with uh, you know different emotions and different characters and uh, yeah we're not... I noticed that it, I didn't analyze the lyrics troll but but it's like a parody song kind of way no it, it, you're you're doing like sort of different characters different styles it, it's interesting to, uh-huh. to notice that yeah <laughs> it was like to basically express different sides of uh, humanity uh-huh. and your own different emotions and because all every person has that obviously but uh, you can show it in different ways but we're lucky enough to be uh, able to write music and uh, go all in on the different so, colors so my first global thought on manifest in some way it has the the trademark amaranth sound and it feels like a logical continuation of helix But it has even more more adrenaline. It's a more heavier album, more vibrant. Um, do you agree with this? Oh yes, 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 absolutely. Because that's how we felt when we 
came back from the tour with Sabaton, we were full of adrenaline and, and mm -hmm. uh, enthusiasm. And uh, uh, so, so I think uh, that kind of transformed into the songwriting. We were very happy and excited. Like it's very nice to also release an album through Nuclear Blast for the first time. It's like it's like a new beginning for us. So we're like cows on the field again. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're going to have a lot of opportunities with, with Nuclear Blast. You're already established on, on the metal scene, but now you're going to like skyrocket, so best of luck to you. Well, <laughs> thank you, let's hope so. I know so. Let's move on to other things. Uh, you were always a very sweet and caring person with the fans. I, I'm noticing you right now that this is true. Um, you, you always transmit like a positive energy uh, and it really shows. Do you feel that this is an important factor, the connection with the fans, the, the treat with fans? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I really genuine, genuinely would wish I had time to speak to everyone. Um, I know. <laughs> but, so that's the, the problem, is that there is not enough time and it, it's so sad if you realize that you forgot to reply to somebody's very sweet message or something, but I really try my best. Um, to make them feel that I'm here for them and I also always never wanted to put myself above other people or like as if I'm different in any way because we're all the same. So I think it's important that for artists to yeah, like invite the audience and also nowadays of course it's much more easy than it was in the past uh, when we have social media and everybody can write me anything you know. Uh, in good and bad. I, <laughs> I did about you but you you didn't answer <laughs> i know this, this is kind of common but yeah uh, you, what did you write me uh i know uh, years ago uh on, on really? the, yeah oh. i i think on on the instagram maybe but i know you you maybe get uh, thousands of messages every day oh, so yeah. it's gonna it, it's kind of impossible to keep track i didn't have time to read all of them yeah yeah i figured but we're talking here Sorry. right now so yeah <laughs> it's so good oh. I'm I good, good, good. Yeah, I'm seeing you and I'm talking to you now, so it's it's kind of a dream come true for me too, so it's so good. <laughs> In fact, this is ties to the other questions. I was at the at your show that you did in Argentina in 2017. What? It, yeah, you play with Delane that night. I don't know if you remember, but that day you were feeling pretty sick and Oh god, I never forget that. <laughs> yeah, it was difficult for you to sing and you had to like, oh. the, the members of the audience participate in some songs, I remember, but it was a really fun show, it was a different show and the energy felt uh, anyway, so do you have a lot of these moments in, in your career, do you remember that particular night? Oh, I mean, I never forget that, it's actually the, the, the most sick i ever been Whoa. anywhere. <laughs> That's the only yeah. time I saw you guys live, <laughs> and it was that time. <laughs> but it's all Who good. Are you? Yeah, I it know. has to happen again. <laughs> it was so, and the, I, the fans were so sweet. I was like freaking out because I didn't really know what to do, mm. and uh, they were like giving me all kinds of different uh, pills and shit. I was like, I did anything, make this go away. Of course, you can't stress about being sick. It's whoa, it doesn't really help, but it was terrible. And I got a shot actually in in my in my ass. What? <laughs> okay. Some something South South American. It's and, and yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I was. I, also, Nils got sick, and actually, our whole crew uh, was uh -huh. sick as well. And that it's just so unfortunate being a singer in these situations because yeah. I, I would have been a musician. Of course, maybe I would have still looked less awake. But uh, with the voice, it's it's so you cannot force yeah, that yeah, yeah. part yeah. of your body if it's like swollen and infected and you're. I had so much fever, I was sweating through like two sweaters and my jacket. Whoa. So it was, I was actually really, really sick. You managed to do the, the whole show and you, I, I remember uh, you, <laughs> I remember I mean, you. I didn't give up, but yeah, yeah what, what did you No, I, I remember you, you dance, you jump, you do the, the, the whole thing, so it, it was great anyway, so. <laughs> the, maybe, I, mean, I think maybe I did that because I realized I can't sing anyways, so why not just... <laughs> do something, not just like sit there and feel sorry for yourself, because it was a very important moment for Amaranth. It was the first time ever we played in Argentina, in South America, so the first show went, went really good in uh, Brazil, uh -huh. but then uh, then we went, got sick on the flight, I think, over and then, but I mean, I also think it might have been a little bit, somebody said to me, maybe I was allergic, because there was some kind of blooming season, 
uh -huh. in Argentina. Maybe, yeah. And that, I didn't think about that, but I'm extremely allergic to pollen. So I get extremely sick, like mm. this kind of flu. So yeah. it could have been like sick plus uh, allergies. So next time I will prepare myself with allergy pills <laughs> and I will right. make sure it's not get right. sick. But, so, so, so I really look forward to come back. I have to say, like we we have, we really want to give you guys a fair show. Yeah, I know, I know. Non, non sick but, people. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but but like I said, it was it was a really fun show to see. It was a unique experience to see you in that stage, and and even then doing a great show, participating with the fans. I even got to be uh, in the in the door of the hotel where you were staying. I, I was Ooh. like outside, like waiting for you, but but I, I saw you maybe through the through the door. Like you were inside in the lobby talking to some fans, and you were um, extremely tired. Uh, you looked extremely tired, so but you managed to do a great show anyway. So congratulations on that. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that. But yeah, I remember I was like in a haze because I also was very high on different kind of medications. So mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> I wasn't really myself, but shit happened. Hope to see you again then. Uh, I also was on the on the seventy thousand tons of metal cruise, but not oh. not the time you were there. So I miss you guys. But uh, I was there uh, three times now from two thousand eighteen till till now, and I think you wow. played. I think you played the year before, like two thousand seventeen, and and I couldn't be there. But hopefully to see you there. Okay. So next question. Uh, Amarante is, is, is like, it got like a, a pop and a beat, like feelings. And that, that it's, a, it's a small component that maybe it generated some, some haters on the metal community. There's always been, a, there's always a hater, you know. But um, I know you, you're, you're also very well received on the community. You participate in many festivals, many world tours. But what do you think about this part of the audience that like rejects Amarante's proposal for not being like metal enough? Um, I, I, I get this question quite often actually, and uh, mm -hmm. my my response is always different depending on my daily mood. So <laughs> okay. if I have a bad day, I I don't understand. I get frustrated. I I hate uh, hate. <laughs> uh, but I mean, of course, it's. It's a feeling that everybody has, and and uh, and um, I mean, it's hard to like erase that part of humanity. So, mm -hmm. so it's a natural reaction. But I, I think it's like you can you can focus that hate on something that really deserves it, and not something like a bunch of kids. Well, we're not kids anymore, but we used to be kids, mm -hmm. like creating music in their apartment. Uh, with a big dream and uh, like just achieving that dream and also on top of that making other people really happy mm -hmm. so the people that really don't understand you know the whole concept maybe for me even if I see someone else hurt another person or or if I can see that someone has a bad influence on someone then then I can dislike that but obviously we are really trying to focus on bringing positive energy yes and uh, If, if that bothers people, then I don't really know what kind of people they are, if you know what I mean. So it feels like it doesn't really have to do with the, the, the music even. It's, it's, uh, it must be something else that, that bothers them. Maybe they just wish that we weren't there at all or if we were not, that we didn't have an audience. And then they try to like kind of push us away. But in the, in the scene, like other bands really, uh, I mean, there are so many fans and also within the bands, we really appreciate each other. Because mm -hmm. we've been obviously touring with a lot of different bands with a lot of different styles. Mm -hmm. Because we are, we our style is unique, so we can't compare ourselves to any other band. But it's really nice also for them, I think, because we don't really try to do what they do. We do our own thing, and I think like that's how metal started yes. to begin with—to be de different and and be dare to stand out. And like maybe I shouldn't be like this, but I am. And and I mean, it is metal music that's what we base all our music on and then we just bring in influences yes and uh, so so uh, i mean people with a good musical ear can hear the metal very clearly they don't really get blinded by you know this the elements that we bring in like for example my voice or like you said the kind of we write the vocal melodies mm -hmm. i would say it's more like swedish style yes and I hear, i hear it the same in a lot of other bands but because they don't have you know the The kind, that kind of voice maybe doesn't appear in the same way. So, yeah, I mean, like, I just think it's it's interesting 
to 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 try to understand what is why why you wouldn't receive something that's different because we we don't take away anything from somebody else we just kind of just add yeah and so 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 it's it's more like a mentally interesting thing and i mean i know because i don't understand people who doesn't accept other differences in general mm -hmm. and and it's it's so it's not maybe about music it's more about like humanity and how we react to things that we find Yes, in, in in the metal community, there's there's a lot of old school guys like they, they like like uh, only the, the first metal bands and things like that, and they're very close-minded on the new stuff, on the modern things, on the other influences. So I think it's kind of uh, rejecting those those new ideas. But I know there's also a, a lot of the audience that respects you and likes you and enjoys your live shows, myself included. So. It, it's all good. That's, I think your fan base is, is always growing and it's going to be growing even more. So, next question. The ballads are another important component in the band. You, you always put like, you know, the full energy on your passion, but in, particularly in, in the ballads, uh, it really takes like another dimension for me to, to hear you sing the, those songs. That's the case with the, the current ballad on this album that is Crystalline. And more particularly, I remember endlessly from Maximalism. This is a this mm -hmm. is a very powerful song, one of my, one of my favorites, and one of my mom's I... favorites also. <laughs> my mom hey. is a, my mom is a fan of you, by the way. Oh, cool! Thanks. Tell uh, her hi, and I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell her. So, are these are these songs more special to you in some way? You you, you sing it with more passion and for for anyone in particular? But I think like. I think that I'm a positive and energetic person, mm -hmm. but uh, like when in a ballad, I can really get my sadness out, and and I think that's uh, that might be what you pick up on that it's uh, to be able to be uh, pure and uh, fragile is also a very beautiful thing, and obviously I have such part, uh, which also led me into to to really want to spread positive energy because I know what it feels like to oh, I like I like beautiful it's it's awesome hmm, it's very <laughs> I never got this question before uh, actually yes and it's nice to get to think why it's like that but maybe I mean most of the songs I write when I write mm -hmm. um, by myself is ballads mm -hmm. so I, I would say like I always felt like that's my might be one of the things I do best actually mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. but uh, I don't know where it comes from. I, I think it comes from that I am kind of a sensitive, very sensitive person, and I can really connect with these feelings. But I can also see the beauty in in being fra not fragile, but uh, like emotional. I mean, I'm not. Uh, it's cool to be strong and tough, and and uh, you know. But but it's also nice to just release your that other part of yourself that's uh, more calmer. <laughs> I got you. I got you thinking <laughs> with this question. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it it really shows. It really shows your your more emotional side. Your more, I think you you connect more with with yourself with, when you're singing those songs. So it yeah. it really shows. I mean, I think it's just for me. It would be impossible to sing a ballad if I couldn't really connect with it. Yes. Then I would rather not get involved, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so also, of course, when I write the ballads, I, I want them to come really from the heart. Otherwise, they are not needed, so to speak. That's how I feel about. It. I think ballads are so like they're they need to be treated with from the heart and not just something you write and that doesn't mean anything. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I only got also always get one chance only to write a ballad for each album because we we don't put more than one ballad on the album. Yeah, albums. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm always like, I'm always like, oh, it has to be real. And uh, what, where can I find that inspiration from this time? And yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. If you only got one chance, it needs to be something really special, something to remember forever. So. And also, you can't be playful in a ballad. You can't be like uh, sarcastic. You can't be, you know, cocky. It's like mm. there is so much things you need to just cut off yes. from that. And uh, it takes uh, some guts to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's the it's the it's the least easy thing to 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 
Okay. To get, uh, I don't know, maybe it makes sense to okay. someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I know your your plans cut off like any other plans and with any band. But what are oh, yeah. the your plans for the rest of the year or maybe next year? I know the, you have the the album releasing now. How are you planning to uh, unleash it? Do you plan to do like some streaming or live show or something like that? We talked about it, but um, we feel like would appreciate to have an audience um, yes. if if we would uh, play the new songs especially live because nobody heard these songs before and the first time we played them we would love to do it in front of an audience so this is a little bit of an issue I would say um, one of the issues is that it would be kind of sad to play the songs and not feel the reaction in real life you know and and then if we would um, uh, so so we would kind of wish to have that experience with an audience and not behind the screen. But if there is no other chance, then we might come up with something. Um, we have opened up a little bit in Sweden now, so we can be 500 people in a venue. So that could could be an option. Uh, otherwise, we have to wait until uh, April next year, if the tour happens with uh, Beyond the Black in Europe. Um, and But we are recording um, music videos, actually a few more than planned uh, due to the pandemic situation. And we are having a lot of ideas actually like we're talking about making a cover album with mm -hmm. like all old favorite songs nice and then we're i was having this it's it would be a big project but to like collect all the demos and uh, re like release them just yeah. to for fun you know to show the fans like this is how the songs sound like before they get uh, yeah. recorded and mixed and uh, you know there's like actually a, like a layer of stuff and i would love to do some kind of Side product and Olaf uh, wants to make some movie scores. As I mean, we have uh, a lot of creative minds that we don't really get, we don't allow ourselves to get uh, affected by anything in our surrounding. So the same goes with this situation. Um, but we will try to do as much stuff as we uh, can. And yeah, let's see what happens. Okay. But we, we are not really, um, yeah, we, we rescheduled the US tour. I really hope we can come to South America as well. And Yeah, we have stuff yes. to plan. <laughs> the touring will hopefully start in April then, and yeah, but we will try, try to uh, figure something out. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see there's no shortage of ideas. You, you always had something in mind, so let's hope we, we can see from you and hear from you soon enough. Okay, that's about it. Um, I wanted to thank you personally. For me, it is was a dream come true, like I said. I, I was able to prove with, with you that you're, in fact, a very sweet and kind person and easy to talk to and a very positive energy all, all the way. So me and oh, your fans, you. are, I'll always be grateful with you. And I wish you the best of luck for, for the rest of the year, for your career. And I hope to talk to you again soon. It was very oh, yes, nice. Absolutely. I really hope to see you in um, real life. And we love our fans over in um, Argentina. Yes. Um, I, I'm from Uruguay, but it's very close to Argentina. But I always travel to Argentina to see Van because not many... Oh. No, I know, I know. That's why you, I She traveled to right. Argentina. <laughs> so, how is the opportunities to play in uh, Uruguay? Are there a lot of bands uh, coming there? Or do you always go to Argentina for shows? Uh, there are some bands coming here, but the audience is not that uh, big. Depends on the band, but the shows are maybe 400 people, 500 people. There's, so, the bands to, to that come here not often do big shows. A lot of times they skip our country and then I have to travel to Argentina. Uh, it, it's, it's, like a very, it's like a very common thing here. Uh, this is a very small country. There are only three million people here in the whole country. So, I and, wish I could go there someday. Yeah, I hope so too. Okay, let, let me know when you come and you're my guest. <laughs> Yay! Um, yeah, I, I hope you, you can do another Latin American tour and maybe squeeze that Uruguay thing in, in the middle. That, that will be another dream come true for me, so... Okay, let's stay in touch then. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Yeah, I know. I have your kite now, so... so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, but your, your stuff is going uh, online, like, everywhere. Thank you so much for the talk and have a really nice uh, weekend. Okay, you too, Elise. Take care. And say... Yes, and say hi to mom, your mom again. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. She's gonna Bye. be very happy. Bye.